I'm not worried about it. I know that God's in control. And I might have some little something wrong with me, but I got something up here wrong with me, so it just <laughs> add on to what I got. <laughs> I'm going to speak a little bit from, first, uh, from John 2, actually John 3. Um, you know, like I said, there's so many things in this world. There's so many people who's hurting. There's so many people don't know which way to go. There's so many people who gets on all these drugs. If you people could only see and hear some of the things that I see and hear every day in the courtroom. My heart breaks. My heart breaks for the kids that come in there. And they, they're easily led. That's number one right there. Uh, we try to teach our children to trust in God. And we can, we can tell them that every day, but unless they want to listen to us, unless Jesus Christ gets in their heart and pricks their heart, then they're going to follow someone else. I know I've raised three children, and praise God, I've never had to go get one out of the jailhouse because I imagine their daddy would have put them in the grave. But anyway, <laughs> you know, um, first let me say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I know the devil's been after me, but I'm not going to let him get me. I know, Jesus, that you have always guided me. You've took me through many things. If I can go through the death of my husband, I can go through anything. But I know, Father, that he's up there with you, and he's happy, and he's been with all his loved ones that's there. Lord, I just ask you again to be with me as I continue to go, go through with this. And I praise you, and I know you'll be with me tomorrow, Lord, and I give you all the praise and the honor. In <clears throat> John 3, it says, Now there was a prophecy. A man named Nicodemus, Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish rulers' council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. And Jesus replied and he says, Very truly I tell you, no one can seek the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And we all know that. We know that if we got to come to God, He's the one that's going to take us to be with Him forever and ever and ever. How can someone be born, born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. You know, a lot of people don't understand why does people want to be baptized? It tells you right here. I tell you that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You shall not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot where you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. Have y'all ever thought about when the winds are blowing where it's going to end at? I've thought of that many a time. Also, when the rain's coming down. Of course, we know it's going in the earth, but then it rises back up too. It comes with the fog and all the stuff like that comes, it comes with. How could this be Nicodemus asked? You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And you know what? We are Jesus' teachers too. We are his teachers too. Y'all don't know how many people that I can reach right there at that courthouse. And I know 
that these young people, and it's not only young people, let me tell y'all, they people my age up there, drugs is taking this country over. There are so many people on drugs, so many people on drugs. But you know God can take that away too. And that's what I tell them. I said, listen, Jesus is the healer. Doctors can't heal you. Doctors can't heal you. They might give you medication that sometimes we think is going to kill us. But still, you know, Jesus is the healer. And if you'll go to him and be sincere. I mean, anybody can just stand up and say, God, bless me, take this out of my body. You know, but you got to have it in here. you got to have it in this heart. And you got to let it shine. you got to let it shine for other people. Let them see who you are. Let them know that you live the life that Jesus wants you to live. I know sometimes I get angry. I shouldn't, but I do. But then I say, God, forgive me. And he always does. He always does. He knows who we are. He knows what we're going through. And he also knows that he says, in my time, not in your time. Even though we're, I just said, I ain't going to get no heart cath. I know God's going to be healed it before I ever get there. And I do know that. I do know that. I'm not worried a bit. I'm not scared of going. If I have to have something else done, God will be there with me for that too. So I'm not worried about. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Just think, one and only son. That breaks your heart. Because I got three kids and I don't want to give any of them up. But Jesus gave his up. He gave him up that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that but to save the world through him. How many times do we ever think about that? That's, that's a, a, a very good statement too. That for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So we got to believe. We got to believe that God came. He's our savior. He's going to take us through anything that we could ever ask him to take us through. I know I cry. I still cry about William dying. Because that was my heart and my soul too. But God fills my heart, and he takes some of that sadness away from me. And I thank him for it every day. I know that God has blessed this church in so many ways. And I've been here all my life, people. Yeah, I'm 71 years old, but I've been here. And people ask me, well, why don't you go somewhere else? And I said, why should I go somewhere else? I got it there. God's there. And that's all I need in this lifetime. So, you know, I don't need to go somewhere else. I, I know where I'm at. I don't know if I brought my little book. Let me go get that. Start doing that. Go down there and get it. <laughs> but anyway, I just had a few things that I had on my heart. And um, last night I was sitting there and God kept saying things to me. And I was thinking about my mom and dad and my family of 13 kids. How in the world I ever raised them, I don't know. But times were hard then. And we eat. If we had anything, we had food to eat, that's for sure, because he was a farmer and he got out there and you know, 
he got it all done and we had it. But I was thinking about God said to me, he said, how do you think that life goes on when people just gives up? You know, some people just gives up. They have a few little problems and they think, I can't take this. I can't go through with this. I just can't do it, God. But if you got Jesus Christ in your heart, you can do it. Amen. You can do it. I can tell you one thing. William Hendricks walked a many a day through them doors right there that he wouldn't have ever done it if God hadn't given him the breath to breathe to do it. I loved God. He loves me. And I know He loves all of you. Amen. I did have had something I wanted to tell you, but I'll tell it to y'all next time. <laughs> but I think everyone, I see this going on in our church here. We're getting things done. And, you know, we didn't have to do that. But God saw that we needed it. And it helps us to see our church looking good. And, you know, if we can't be the ones to do this, then who's going to do it? We got to support our church. We got to support our church. We have a lot of things that needs to be done around here. And listen, people. I think about these children that just came back from their little trip they had. I let them tell you, like I said, I've been here all my life, but I never went on a trip like that from Kettle Creek Church. <laughs> but if it wasn't for everybody helping, they wouldn't have went either. So people, y'all just keep on helping these kids and, and let them know that we do care about them. Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you, Father, for this day. I thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you give us. Lord, I know that we couldn't walk, we couldn't see, we couldn't breathe if it wasn't for you, Jesus. Lord, as I go tomorrow to have this test done, I'm not worried about it, Jesus. Because I know that you're going to be there for me. You're going to be the one doing whatever needs to be done. If I have to have pacemaker, whatever it's going to be, God. I'm not worried about it. I know that you are the healer, and I may not have to have nothing done, and it'll be of your will, dear God. I thank you, Lord, and I ask you again to bless this church. Bless each person that's in here. Bless, Lord, all the sickness that's of those that's members of our church, whether they members or not, God. Bless all the little children. Bless, Father, all these people that works with these little children from babies right on up to teenagers and right on out jesus and most of all lord i ask you to keep your hand on brother danny that you bless him you touch his health lord you touch his body you touch him that he can go out and he can give your word out father to everywhere he goes and that you will draw more people into our church lord and help us father to do your will and we love you and we praise you for all these things I ask in your name. Amen.